Ladies and gentlemen, the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. The 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games starts now. The Open starts now. Welcome to Atlanta. The eyes of nearly 10,000 worldwide affiliates are focused on one. And the 30 boxes who call Atlanta home have descended on CrossFit North Atlanta. Tonight, the capital of Georgia is the capital of CrossFit. The former site of the Summer Olympics now hosts the start of another worldwide competition, the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games Open. A city that has played host to some of the biggest names in sports now welcomes two of CrossFit's most elite, Central East farm boy Marcus Hendren and the future of NorCal Garrett Fisher. They're set to crank the thermostat in Atlanta. So the road to Carson starts right here in the ATL. Big props to our host CrossFit North Atlanta, an amazing community clearly. This place is blowing up. It has been for the past 30 minutes already. Of course, they're one of 9,000 affiliates that make up this worldwide family. My name is Rory McKernan. I'm lucky enough to tag along as your host for the next five weeks of open competition. There's some amazing locations, some tremendous athletes, and we assume some pretty scary workouts. The CrossFit Games is now in its eighth year. So, the, and the Open is now in its fourth year. So a lot of you guys have been doing this for a while. This year it's time to test yourself again against the biggest field that we've ever seen. Some of you guys are newbies. And so welcome, let me be the first to say, you're now part of the biggest, most badass fitness community on the face of the earth. The Open's your opportunity to test yourself against your friends, your gym, and the fittest on earth. Of course, this show is all about you guys. It's by CrossFit for CrossFitters, so we want you to be a part of it. For the first time this year, follow us on Twitter. You can use the hashtag CrossFit Games and be part of the show. Your questions might make it on air or your analysis will put on the bottom of the screen. So please be a part of it. If you're not on Twitter yet, I can't help you, bro. You're gonna miss out on interacting with people like my boy Dave Castro. Dave, let's kick it off. This crowd is out of control. This crowd is this out crowd of control. This crowd is awesome. You guys are great. Kicking it off big for 14.1. So Dave, the games has three unique stages. What makes the Open so special? You talk about the three stages of the CrossFit Games season. The regionals and the CrossFit Games in Carson, the finals, they're for the best of the best. They're for the 1% of all the people in the Open that play this sport. The Open, it's for all of us. It's for all of us to get involved and to have fun and get to compete against the guys we look up to, like Garrett Fisher, Marcus Hendren, and Rich Froning. All those guys we get to measure up against and compete side by side. That's what the Open's about. And the most significant part, it all starts here, right at the affiliate. That's right, so you mentioned the local affiliate. Part of our broadcast team, Kiki, Kiki Dixon, has been here for two days, mixing it up with the community, and not surprisingly for Kiki, she's made some new friends. Kiki? Thanks, Ro. What an amazing night to be here in Atlanta. That's right. It doesn't matter whether you've been doing this for four months or four years. This is exciting. I'm here with Tyler. He's been with us for two months now, and he's already signed up for the Open. Tyler, what motivated you to be a part of the Open? Well, everybody at our box at Resur CrossFit Resurgence, shout out. Uh, and I got a, the main thing is I got my, one of my best friends in Alabama and also my cousin who's in Alabama. They do CrossFit. I finally got all the movements and said, I want to see how I stack up against those guys. It's always competitive with all of those guys. I like to hear it. Are you going to be at the regionals? Absolutely. There we go. <laughs> well, good luck to you, Tyler, and good luck to the athletes who are about ready to throw down 14.1. Back to you, Ro. Tyler, welcome to the family, brother. You're new to the Open, and there's the worldwide trend that we're actually seeing. Check this out.
Well, that's pretty cool. Dave, over 100,000 brand new participants. CrossFit is clearly creating a global sport. It's bigger than that. I have a friend who wanted to compete in the Open, but because of the austere conditions he's in, he's not going to be able to compete, but he did decide to send us a message. Hi, I'm NASA astronaut Mike Hopkins aboard the International Space Station. I wanted to take a moment to congratulate everyone competing in the 2014 CrossFit Games. Exercise is such an important part of a healthy lifestyle on Earth, and in space, it is a key countermeasure against muscle and bone loss during long-duration missions. Therefore, researchers study the physical condition of astronauts during spaceflight, and the results not only help keep us in top condition while in microgravity, but they are beneficial to people all over the world. So, keep up the great work, and best of luck during the competition. Your enthusiasm and passion for fitness are motivation for all of us on the International Space Station. And if you get a chance, take a look up and know you have fans orbiting 260 miles above. Guys, there's CrossFitters in space. There's CrossFitters in space, need I say more? But let's bring it back down here to Earth where two of the fittest men on this planet are gonna face off in 14.1. Are you guys ready to meet the athletes? Fair enough. First, the farm boy from Ohio. Marcus Hendren is no stranger to hard work, whether it's on the farm or in the gym, and that's been the key to his success and two consecutive top 10 finishes in the CrossFit Games. Garrett, but he knows that if he wants to be on the podium, he can't have any weaknesses. It's been the same stuff the last two years. My snatch technique on medium heavy loads, and then my swimming, obviously. So I've got, I've got a coach that I swim every week with on Sundays, and I've changed, changed my snatch technique, and just having fun with it again. While he's had to battle to get to Carson, Hendren proved he belongs, with impressive finishes in both appearances at the games. I think you just have to take a step back, realize how lucky you are. You know, I'm training to go to one of the most specialized fitness events in the entire world. Uh, that shouldn't really be a burden, that should just be fun. If he's going to get to the podium at the StubHub Center, he will likely have to deal with the man he's set to face tonight, Garrett Fisher. I'm a big fan of Garrett Fisher, but then at the same time I'm not because he beat me. I'm happy for the guy, I know what it takes to get there. So he's put in a lot, of, a lot of hard work. He deserves everything that's coming to him. He has perfect hair. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mine? No product. That's, that's straight man sweat right there. CrossFit North Atlanta, show your love for Marcus Hendricks! Marcus Hendrick! Joining Marcus this evening to kick off the 2014 season is the young buck from NorCal CrossFit. In his rookie season, Garrett Fisher made huge waves. He stepped out of the shadow of Jason Kalipa at the NorCal Regional, finishing in the top 10 in every single workout. He backed that up at the CrossFit Games with a fifth place finish and is the second youngest man at the CrossFit Games this year. He's got a very, very bright future. Oh, 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 yeah! Yeah, PR today. At 22 years old, Fisher brings a youthful energy to a sport dominated by athletes five to 10 years his elder. They asked for three walkout songs and I told him one song. Trophies by Drake, because that's the only song I want. Oh, I'm a huge fan of Drake. I'm probably the biggest fan there is. Mm -hmm. Champagne Poppy. I reached out to him multiple times. I'm trying to train him. So Drake, if you're listening to this, come by, and uh, we, maybe we can set something up and I get to train you. 
Since his fifth place finish at the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games as a rookie, Garrett's life has transformed. My life changed completely after getting fifth place at the game. So this offseason, I've been to New York, been to Boston, Miami, Germany. I went to Hawaii. I went to Big Sky, Montana. So it's been a lot of plane flights, but not too many, not too many people get to do that, especially a 22-year-old. No matter where his success takes him, he'll always bring his dream crew with him. Drake says, it's good to make it, but it's better when the team makes it with you. So I try to include my team with anything I do, and I'm always giving them a shout out, showing them love, because they're my family. A year older, wiser, and stronger, he's poised for a second run at the podium in Carson. And his trip back to the game starts tonight, as he takes on the man he beat out by just one spot in last year's final, Marcus Hendrick. All right, let's give a big Dirty South welcome for NorCal's Garrett Fisher! Ladies and gentlemen, Garrett Fisher! Ladies and gentlemen, again, Dave Castro. In 2007, we held the first ever CrossFit Games. We had 60 competitors. In 2011, we had the first ever CrossFit Games Open online competition. We had 27,000 competitors. This year, we have over 190,000 competitors at this point. For those of you who competed in the first year of the CrossFit Games Open 2011, this workout will be familiar to you. 14.1 is a repeat. 14.1 is a repeat from the first year of the CrossFit Games Open. 14.1 is the first ever CrossFit Games Open workout. 14.1 is 11.1. As many reps as possible in 10 minutes of 30 double unders and 15 snatches. 75 pounds for the men, 55 pounds for the women. Any questions? Thank you. All right. So the first workout of, 14, of 2014 is the first open workout ever in the history of the open. There was speculation about both double unders and repeat workouts. So for better or worse, we're gonna get them both. Now, if memory serves, neither of these athletes were actually in the Open in 2011, so this could be a maiden voyage for them. At the time, the top scores of the workout went to the individuals who went on to win the CrossFit Games, Rich Froning Jr. and Annie Thoris' daughter. Rich was 13 snatches into his, 10, in his 10th round, and Annie finished nine rounds even. So, three years later, what can these men accomplish? Regardless of what they do, they have to hit the standards. So let's check out the prescription for 14.1. All of three, two, one, go. The athlete begins their double unders. For every repetition of the double under, the rope must pass forwards around the athlete's body. Each double under repetition must have the rope pass around the athlete's body twice. Single unders are not permitted. The snatch begins with the bar on the ground and finishes when the athlete brings the weight overhead. We need to see the arms, hips, and knees fully locked out with the bar clearly over the profile of the athlete's body. Your score for this workout is the total number of repetitions completed within the 10 minutes.
So the standards are very straightforward, but one note, please. If you're going to do this workout right now, make sure you go to the game's website, games.crossfit.com. These are abbreviated standards for the broadcast. Please don't make your, your score not count on the leaderboard because of a silly mistake. The athletes are ready. They're warming up. 14.1 goes down after a short break. Please don't go away. I mean, I mean, CrossFit is, is my life now. It's as much a part of me as it was what, what football was for me when I was 12 years old. I breathe CrossFit. CrossFit is a part of me um, as a coach. I train CrossFit. As an athlete. I work on a CrossFit box. Um, as a girlfriend, I train with my boyfriend. Um, and I couldn't imagine my life without it now. It's, it's just a part of me. It's simply, you know, it runs through my blood. Sounds, sounds cliche, but it does. Yeah. Everything is CrossFit right now. Who is this man that goes by the name Cinco? Who is this man that walks in slow motion? Why does he drive a convertible? Does he really need another haircut? Is this all just a dream? Maybe every day is a dream. Cinco, what? It's still your set. When you're the fit, fittest man in the world. That's what I'm talking about. CrossFit is not an easy discipline, it's tough. I think gone the days of going to the gym and pumping iron and running on treadmills. We have now redefined what it means to be in shape. It's good for your mind, your body, your soul. Now it's the passion to get better, the passion to see these people. And there's no other community I've been a part of that's like CrossFit. We are. We are. We are, we are United, United Life Fitness. Fitness. Welcome back to our live broadcast of 14.1. The athletes are ready to go. We know the workout, 14.1 is 11.1. The Open continues to grow and grow and grow, and as it does, we're attracting people from all walks of life. You never know who's gonna step up next to you in the gym and throw down the Open workout. Like this next member of our broadcast team. He's an avid CrossFitter. This is his third year of Open competition, and in his spare time, He's the host of one, of one of NBC's most popular shows. Here to give us analysis for everyone else, please welcome the biggest losers, Bob Harper. How's it going, Rory? Well, I'm with Laura right now. Laura, what's your affiliate? CrossFit Kennesaw. All right, so let's talk about strategy. 14.1 is 11.1. What do you think? How do you feel about it? What's your strategy going in? You use your strengths and you face your weaknesses. So what's your weakness in this? Double unders. What? Double unders all day long. Well, you got a few days to practice those, right? Because these gladiators are going to come out here and just like kill it. Yeah, for 10 solid minutes. All right, good. Back to you, Roar. Thank you, Bob. So we're ready, guys. We've waited long enough. It's time for the workout. For the competition call, we have two members of CrossFit seminar training team. We have Flowmaster Sheree Chan and the man who got 31st in the world in this workout in 2011, Chase Ingram. Guys? Thank you, Rory. Cherie, I've got to say, just based off what Rory said, I obviously love this workout. I'm very <laughs> excited about it. But tell me your thoughts on this. I have butterflies in my stomach. I don't know about you, but the first we as a community are going to be better than we were then, I'm pretty excited. And if you look at the snatch in the double under, it's a very simple couplet. Two movements that on the surface should not interfere with each other. That is a true expression of the heart of our CrossFit programming. Well, it, the open season for the CrossFit game is here and the whole world is invited to compete, but it's going to start with these two men right here, right now. Let's go down to the competition floor where Dave Castro is with our athletes. They might not hit. 30 seconds. Pick up your ropes. <laughs> 10 seconds. Start your timer. When I, when I say. Five seconds. Let's get loud. Let's hear it from these athletes. The open starts now. Three, two, one, go. 
14.1 is here. The 2014 CrossFit Games season has begun. Marcus Hendren and Garrett Fisher are going head to head in a classic, the first open workout we've ever received. 11.1, 10 minute AMRAP, 30 double unders, and 15 power snatches. 75 pounds for the men, 55 for the ladies. And we are in round number one. The best score we saw in 2011 was set by Rich Froning Jr. It was 443 reps. He was just two snatches shy of 10 total rounds. As expected here in the beginning, both men are stoic, kind of keeping composure here. And they're on pace to beat Rich, which was basically around a minute back in 2011. That's a great place to keep your eyes. Both men are about to finish their last rep, 45 reps per round, finishing round number one just in 55 seconds. Now, a little bit of a surprise for me, Cherie. I thought these guys would come out blazing for sure, just based off the hype coming in 14.1. This crowd, they're not used to just being all by themselves. Neither one of these guys are rookies, even though Garrett showed up to the game for the first time last year. So you better know they know how to kind of compose themselves and get themselves through, and that's what they're doing here. Garrett Fisher has a five rep lead on Marcus Hendren, but now they're actually still neck and neck. We're about a minute 30 in. They're in round number two. We have 15 power snatches going from the floor to overhead. Now, Cherie, I just said power snatch, something we're used to seeing usually dropping under, but Marcus is using a little bit of different technique here. Both of these guys are using a muscle snatch, which I would expect. That just means that the bar goes straight up. They don't rebend the knee and get underneath. Um, it's going to be quicker. It's going to save their legs a little bit on that jumping. So if they can stick to that as long as possible, they're going to be fatigued less. Now we say it's quicker. Two minutes down, two rounds down. So these men are on pace right now to set the best score we've seen. 450 or 443 set by Rich Froning in 2011. Marcus Hendren and Garrett Fisher neck and neck this entire time. Now 10 minutes. It's a workout range. It's not too long. These guys seem to be, I, I would say, pacing it out maybe a little too much. Yeah, you can see Garrett there looking over at Chuck, his judge, kind of seeing, am I done? Am I done? Um, to come over there. It's going to be interesting to see how those double unders play out in their head. Both men are five reps into their 15 power snatches. They're trying to compl complete round number three. We're about 15 seconds out of that three minute mark, seven minutes to go. Now it's a smooth control. They have yet to really separate from one another right now. And we were talking earlier, Sheree, is that we're probably gonna see most of the fireworks happen around that five to seven minute mark. They are rep and rep. And if you look a little bit at Marcus, he's seeming a little fatigued in the snap. He's starting to get under it a little bit, so maybe round four is where we might see a breakaway. Both men have pretty good transitions. Being such a short event with these, the speed of these reps, right? You're going to get about 30 reps. We're probably looking between 15 to 20 seconds. So that's a lot of work and a little bit of time. So transitions getting off the bar to the rope is going to be very key. It's crucial. And if you look back at all open workouts, you see 20, 50, 100 places only by a rep or two. So it's huge, these transition times. Marcus Hendren and Garrett Fisher neck and neck coming up to the four minute mark. They're in, finished round number three. They're coming on to round number four. Both men yet still kind of pacing off each other. It's something Garrett Fisher's used to with his NorCal crew. You know, he's getting to work out with the likes of Pat Barber, Jason Kalipa, Miranda Oldroyd. So he's used to maybe trying to play catch up with these crew, but Marcus is taking it pretty steady right now, but we're starting to see some distance set down. It looks like Marcus will be the first guy to break. We're gonna have to keep our eye on this. This might come into play later towards the, the end of this event. I did not expect to see him break there at all. Both men four rounds down, starting round number five. We're four minutes and 30 seconds in. Garrett Fisher holding a slight lead now on Marcus Hendrick. Now, it might only be five seconds, but again, we're talking about the repetitions or the cycle time of something like double unders. That's about a 10 to 15 rep distance he's going to put on him. And Garrett Fisher now moving to the bar first over Marcus Hendrick. 
right here, this is going to be where Marcus needs to dig into his mental strength, which we know he has. He's been at multiple competitions and talked to us about how he's known what he has to do to win something. So we'll see if he can dig into that right here. Or will that get to him that Garrett kind of got a little tiny bit of an edge? Garrett Fisher, we spoke, we're just past the halfway mark. Marcus Hendren breaks again, and Garrett Fisher is looking to continue his streak of unbroken reps. The judge on the left side of your screen, hand in the air, that's denoting they've got five reps or less to finish this implement. And he breaks again. I'm not sure why he's not moving to a power snatch to be able to keep up with it. If it's the grip, if it's the fatigue in his shoulders going on right now as opposed to his legs. Garrett Fisher now back to the rope. They are starting round number six. They have five rounds down. We're coming up on the six minute mark. There will be only four minutes left. We said we're going to see some shifts around that five minute mark. And it looks like Garrett Fisher is now taking the league and he is not looking back. Both gentlemen right now are on pace if they stay here to beat Rich's record in 2011. We'll see if they can hang tight with getting that whole round a minute. Garrett Fisher looking to finish round number six. He's on his 15 power snatches right now. Marcus Hendren is now back. He's about four to five rests behind him. Now, Marcus with that back where you think he's he has shown in the past, he has the ability to hang in there tough and grit these workouts out, but we've seen him break unnaturally to his, his background and what he's done in the past. Garrett Fisher still going unbroken, looking to finish round number six. You can see him looking off to the side, keeping his eye on the clock over to the left. He's Garrett. looking at the clock, he's looking at his judge. He's very calculated in everything that he seems to be doing right now. Um, so we'll see if he can maintain this. Six rounds down, we have three minutes left to go. Now this is the time to push the pace. Everybody's tired, right? We've got that large cardio hit, our muscles are burning. But like we, look, double unders, you can always do it when we get fatigued. This weight's not heavy enough to really break these athletes up. But on the left side of your screen, Marcus Hendren is really struggling with these snatches. It's definitely not the weight. It's the stamina in the muscle. If you remember doing this back in 2011, what'd you feel? Your shoulders were burning as you were pulling that bar off the ground. 30 seconds left to go. Garrett Fisher still stuck on these double unders. He's having a lot of trouble with these snatches. Garrett is still on pace to get that full 10 rounds and a few reps ahead. And if he gets to the double unders, who knows? Because those go so fast, you only need a couple seconds to really make a lot of lead. Towards the end of this workout, you almost think it's about a race to get to the double unders. And then Garrett Fisher has now broke for the first time into his seventh round. He has about five reps left. Judge's hand will be in the air. Marcus Hendren now five to six reps behind him. If Garrett Fisher starts to break down here and he puts the bar down again, this is a chance for Marcus Hendren to make a move. And you can tell that he was speeding up and he kind of took a little cue there. He's only four reps, five reps ahead right now. We'll see if Marcus can kind of dig deep. We have Go about ahead. 90 seconds left in this competition. On the top middle part of your screen, you can see the rep count. Garrett Fisher is now going to pull away. He only has about a 10 second lead, but with these reps, these double unders, he's going to get a big distance put on him. It's up to Marcus Hendren to get off this bar, back to the road, and it's going to be a fight for these last 15 snatches. Garrett Fisher is done. He's at 345. He is now moving back to the bar. We are in our final 60 seconds. It's going to be all coming down. Can Marcus Hendren get back to the bar and hang with Garrett Fisher? You got to know what's going through his head right now. Fight. Fight for those last 50 seconds to kind of pull ahead. Garrett Fisher on your right. Marcus Hendren now to the bar on the left. This is a move that Garrett F or Marcus Hendren needs to go. Head to head. He can capitalize on it if he can just keep moving and get underneath that bar. 30 seconds left. Garrett Fisher has to hang on to the bar because you know Marcus, Marcus Hendren puts it down. I can't believe it. He has to know what rep he's on. We have 20 seconds left. Garrett Fisher, four reps ahead. Marcus Hendren drops the bar again. 15 seconds left. Garrett Fisher is going back to the double unders. That's
going to make a huge lead for him. Look at those are just reps running away. Running the rep count up. Five seconds left. And incredible. Garrett Fisher has taken 14.1 over Marcus Hendren with a score of 373. That was terrifying. Absolutely terrifying to watch. Now, if we go back to what Rich did in 2011, neither one of these gentlemen in this environment passed that. Rich still holds the record. Rich still holds the record by a score of 443 reps, where Garrett Fisher, or 448, I'm sorry, Garrett Fisher, 373, Marcus Hendren, 358. I love seeing an athlete with a big old smile on their face when they're done putting themselves through some pain. That's some serious recovery that showed on that 22-year-old <laughs> right away, right back at it in the crowd. Now we saw in the beginning, they took it out at a pretty easy pace. Looking back on the scores from 2011, 373 isn't going to get him that high on the leaderboard. Now it's three years ago, so we, we might see some interesting things come out of this event as we move forward through the weekend. We know neither of these gentlemen had done this in 2011. In 2011, we had two weeks to do this workout because of an error on the website. So people would redo this four, five, even six times. And when you do that, you start to learn how to game it. You look at the time, you can pace yourself, and you better believe both of these two gentlemen are gonna figure that out before the end of Monday night when all scores have to be in. That's true, that's kind of the beauty of the open, or the beauty of the curse per se, is you have the <laughs> yeah. ability to redo these workouts if you need to. All right, we will be back. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more action analysis from here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a really humbling experience to stand in front of 60 participants every weekend and shake their hands and share with them the love that we all have for CrossFit. And I think the transmission of culture is just an expression of our passion for CrossFit and our passion for the knowledge that we get to give to people and that experience we get to have every weekend. I don't think it's anything we have to think about. It's just something that's a byproduct of what we love to do. Welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia, where we just finished 14.1. What an amazing performance. It's so good to see a repeat workout just to see how our fitness has improved. But let's take a look back and see how Garrett Fisher took first place over Marcus Hendren. So we are going rep for rep. The guys are very close to the first four to five rounds. And there you see Cherie the first time that bar hit the floor. You've got to wonder what was going on in his mind, especially with Garrett too. Seeing that go down, he's like, okay, here's my chance to get ahead, stay ahead. And as soon as that bar went down, it stayed there for the rest of that 10 minutes. Well, we knew it was going to come down to consistency, good pacing, steady reps, not trying to go out too fast. But we saw it started to take its toll, and it's hard to go head to head because you don't really have anybody else to pace off of but the guy in front of you. So we're gonna, we'll go down to the competition floor with our two athletes and Rory McKernan with our winner, Garrett Fitz.
Fisher. Garrett, first of all, congratulations, an amazing performance. Thank you. This is the first time you're not really working out with the Dream Crew, and that's the first question I want to ask you. How did that affect you? It was fine. Um, one thing Jason's told me um, er, this year was uh, start training by myself, kind of getting used to that environment. So I've been really trying to implement Still working out with my crew, but in the morning I try to hit something by myself, and it really kind of showed here. Cool. So this was an all-out sprint, obviously, 10 minutes. Marcus was the first to break. Um, when did the workout really start for you? When he broke? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just told myself that after he, I saw him drop the bar, stayed one rep ahead of him the whole time, and that's what I did. Nice. So fantastic job this evening. You did an amazing job, and uh, the man who's been chasing you for 10 minutes is with Kiki Dixon. Kiki. Marcus, we saw you drop the bar, and I believe it was in the fourth round. What was going on there? My wrists or my forearms were on fire. You know, he's just, he was a tougher man for that situation right there. Uh, I have no excuse. Fair enough. And then we saw you make a run. I believe it was you were five reps within each other at one point. What was going through your mind at that time? The, the crowd started getting hyped with like a minute to go, and that was, that was pretty invigorating. So I, I made a run for it, and he stayed ahead of me. Good for him. Awesome effort. Awesome effort. Are you done with 14.1, or are you giving another run? No, I, I never do the open workouts again. They, I hate them, so. <laughs> He says no more. We look forward to seeing that score stay on top. And uh, congrats, buddy. Back to you, Ro. Big thank you for both of our athletes, guys. Let's give it up. <laughs> Mr. Castro, one in the books for 2014. What do you think? I was uh, really impressed by his performance, but what's interesting is in 2011, three years ago, Rich Froning did nine rounds and 13 snatches, one round more than he did. So in three, year, in three years, that still stands to this point. What I'm really going to be interested in seeing is how many other athletes are able to uh, beat that score from last year, and more, or from three years ago, and more importantly, to see if Rich is able to beat that score. Interestingly enough, this is one of those events where it's not going to compress much more. Rich did that then, and he did it unbroken and really fast. We might see into the high 10, you know, finishing uh, 10 rounds, but not much more than that, not into the 11s, because there's just no room. You just keep moving. They have to keep moving and moving and not stop at all. And as soon as you break it up, you lose those precious rounds. So this one, it'll be interesting to compare it at the end of the day to Rich's score of nine rounds and uh, 13 snatches. But these two athletes here today, Great job. We're proud of them. And uh, are you proud of the event? We got the first one out of the way. We got some cool new digs. What are, your, uh, what are your thoughts on 14 in general? This is the coolest crowd we've seen yet at any of the Opens. Thank you. And Travis Harkey. Travis Harkey, who, who just put down his beer. This is the coolest host we've had. Thank you for being an amazing host. Thank you, Atlanta. Thank you for everything. You guys are great. So our show is in the books, guys, but please do stick around for the cool down. Remember, we're answering your questions submitted via Twitter to the athletes. Toss them about their strategy. Ask Dave about programming. Ask Garrett about his hair if you want to. Anything goes. Very mellow and casual. So the show's over. Now it's our turn. Go have fun. Good luck with 14.1. We'll see you next week in Miami. And until then, I'll see you on the leaderboard. Next week, the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games Open heads to the Sunshine State. Camille LeBlanc Bazinet continues her quest for a fifth trip to the CrossFit Games. She'll face off against the spider monkey, Talena Fortunato, who will have her hometown fans in her corner. We're going to Miami. 14.2, live next Thursday on games.crossfit.com.
Life doesn't care where you're going or how you get there. Sometimes you have to push, pull, or fight through it. It's not always perfect, and it doesn't come easy. Life simply asks that you join it. All right, welcome back, my friends. And this is the first installment of the Cool Down Show. It's casual, there is no script. We're just chopping it up with the athletes who just took on the workout that you're about to take on as well. The questions come from you and the magic of the internet. So let's get it kicked off with the first tweet. All right, we don't have a tweet yet, so I got a follow-up question uh, for Garrett. Garrett, you felt that charge come in in the end. Well, let's go to the tweets here. From Saken Triple Zero, they say, what were you thinking, Garrett, when you finally broke up the snatches? That this hurts? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to go on broken, but it just didn't happen. So it was, it was a painful workout. It looked like it, no doubt. So, Who's up next? Not a lot of thought to it. I tried to go on broken <laughs> for as long as possible and it didn't work out. Maybe those forearms felt so, feeling crispy for you too. So when it came down to the end and you're getting chased by Marcus and you felt you felt the pressure for like 10 seconds, how about that? Did you feel that pressure coming, Kiki? It's a great uh, question. Kind of. I had my own pace. I just wanted to do what I needed to do and I knew what I needed to do. Um, I wasn't really trying to focus on him, but once I saw him break it, then I knew I just had to stay ahead of him the whole time. Right on. I think this one is probably for Mr. Castro and he sort of addressed it in his closing thoughts, but from uh, CFE coach, how many people will beat Rich's 2011 score of 448? That's a tough question. I'm gonna shoot from the hip, and I'm gonna say less than 20. And he'll still have one of the top, he'll beat his score, and then there'll be less than 20 people in the world who uh, topped his score from 2011. I, I actually wanna hear speculation from that. I think that that's Josh Elmore. So I wanna hear your speculation too, Josh. Uh -huh. Shoot it to me. Uh, I don't know that anybody can do it. I mean, do, what do you guys think? You just took it on. Was it possible for you to get two more rounds? It is Rich. Say again? So the only person that's going to beat Rich's score from three years ago is Rich. So we need a twit from, uh, tweet from Rich Froning. Is it a tweet or a tweet? A tweet. I believe it's a tweet. Rich, if you're watching, yeah, what do you have to something. say? Are you coming after your own score or what? Uh, I think a handful of people will. I think Rich will, Jason will, Josh Bridges, and a couple of other games athletes. Maybe because they're sneaking people, but there won't be too many people. Put a number. Beating. Put a number on it. Less than 10. Less than 10? Okay. I go less than 20. What do you say? Less than one? one? He says just one. one. Just one. <laughs> one person that's rich. I know that the next question is for you. Dave Castro from Mike Workentine. Uh, let's see, how many athletes does he think will get 10 rounds or more? We just addressed that, really. So 20 or less is your answer. And Marcus says, the only man that can be rich is rich. 
good statement right there. I'm gonna go with 10, 10 or less. I'm, I, I, I'm with one. Marcus on this. True. All right, Mike's got another one. He said, who originally came up with 14.1 back in 2011? There is a team of us who uh, came up with the workout. And it was an interesting, you know, it was our first time ever doing this format, doing a, uh, the online competition. And it was, we wanted to pick something that we knew would have pretty good standards and would be relatively easy to uh, facilitate. And we were very pleased with it back then. And it's a clean workout, it's a nice workout, it's very friendly for a lot of people to do. That's why we decided to do it again this year. And, and I've seen that process very uh, intimately. I know you don't just choose one and land on one, and it's not an easy deal. Do you want to speak to that at all, how these workouts are birthed? This is a year-round process. We're planning, um, we're planning next year's games. We're planning this year's games. We're planning next year's games. These workouts are always stewing and being tweaked and being modified, and a lot of, a lot of time and thought goes into them. This wasn't, we didn't pick this as a scapegoat to just make it easy and have a, uh, do a throwback workout so we didn't have to make something new. We do this for a reason. So we can compare the modern athlete to what they were doing in 2011. And the significance of that is very important. The data we can get from that is very important. And for the 27,000 people who did it back then, who get to test themselves now, they get to see how much they progress and if their methodology and their training is actually working. All right, we are waiting on our questions from Twitter. Here we go. How would you tell an average CrossFitter doing the open to pace this wad? Marcus, you want to help him out with that? Um, if you're not comfortable going at least a couple rounds uh, at 75 pounds overhead on the snatch, I'd say break it up into sets of five. Just make sure when you drop the bar that you're picking it back up right away. Uh, try and stay consistent the whole time because 10 minutes uh, is actually a pretty long time. You're at CrossFit New Albany, but do you coach as well? I don't coach, actually, no. Just train there. Okay, great. Uh, next one. While we're waiting for that one, I know there are a lot of people in NorCal. To, I'm, I'm texting a couple of them. What do you have to say to your crew, the, the crew love? <laughs> have fun. They're going to they're gonna do just fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, another question, another question for Marcus. You said that you're never going to do an open workout twice. And the question is, do you know any other games athletes who feel this way? And I'm assuming the question's for you, but we can all answer it. Um, you know, the only athlete that I really talked to on a regular basis was Graham. I know Graham will hit a workout uh, more than once as he has to. I'll, I'll correct that and say that if I'm, if I'm not sitting well in the region after this, after this score, I'll have to do it again. I think that's a very important point. A lot of these athletes say they won't do it more than once. But nowadays, with so many people competing, one or two reps can move you really high up the leaderboard, and you need to take a look at yourself and say, hey, if I need to even make it to regionals, I might have to do this twice. So as more and more people play this at a high level, that notion of you'll only do this once needs to be flexible. Because if, it's, if you're sitting low, like he just said, you'll need to do this again to jump up a little higher. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with doing any of these workouts twice or three times. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you can do it once and sit real high, or if you do it once and be comfortable with your performance, that's your call. It's fine. Right on. So we have one final question. We have one more question. It says, can we expect to see more repeats this year? I'm going to take that to Dave. He's the only one that knows. I want the athletes to answer as well. Thank you guys for coming. This has been a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful event. These guys were amazing. <laughs> All right, that's, that's going to wrap up our first, our first ever cool down show. Thanks for joining us, guys. Remember to join us next week in Miami. We'll see you there. Peace.